Kanye was at Joe Osteen's church. Let's quickly watch that because that's quite funny. I haven't necessarily seen it. Um, the Joe Osteen thing is very interesting because I, well, we'll, I'll react to it now because I haven't actually watched the video f uh, all the way through. The Joe Osteen thing is diff is interesting <coughs> because Joe Osteen, if you guys are familiar with him, he ca he was he rose to prominence during the whole Hurricane Harvey, I think, or Hurricane Katrina. One of those hurricanes happened in the US and it kind of caused massive amounts of flooding. And essentially, I think part of the reason why they got a lot of blame was because they didn't open their doors quick enough for the people who are seeking refuge, right? Because their houses were destroyed. Um, and I think it happened over a period of maybe a couple of weeks. And I think it all sparked or stemmed from the church um, inadvertently tweeting out their thoughts and prayers sort of tweet where people are affected by the flood. And then people reply, hey, what, instead of thoughts and prayers, why don't you open your doors up and let people in so they can have somewhere to have refuge, right? You're a church after all. Um, they didn't reply, didn't reply. Then suddenly they do reply and say, oh, they've also suffered massive damaging, so the da damage to their building, so they can't let people in their church um, until the repairs are done. And then, of course, you know, people, I think, looked up the place where Joel Osteen's church is at, and I think it's a former NBA stadium or something along those kind of lines, and it's built in an area where it's there's a lot of flooding anyway in that area. So I think they built the original building, I think it was the sports arena, they built it in a way where it can't get flooded. I think it's it's kind of raised on a on a platform. Or, there's something how it's built that basically allows it to not be uh, affected by flooding as much as every any other building, right? So that was something that kind of put him um, in people's bad books. Like, no, you're actually wrong. Your, pro pro your property probably isn't flooded. Then some someone on social media decided to go to the church and kind of live streamed and showed the video of the outside of the church and showed the inside and showed basically there's no damage whatsoever. Essentially killed, you know, essentially killed that story painted out Joel Osteen and the church to be, you know, liars for the most part. Joel Osteen appeared on the news program, looked incredibly nervous, basically spoke in circles, and people got to see, you know, the true character of a person. Now, that could be an isolated situation. That could be something you could say, hey, it was a mistake. Uh, those cro those uh, wires were crossed. Communication didn't run well between different departments, whatever it may be. But sometimes in those kind of, you know, times of need where people kind of actually need the church to step in in a humanitarian way and the person does something like that, it basically goes to show the true character of a person, I think, because that's an easy win. It doesn't. It's not something that you need to pass with legal or whatever. It's just a process of the pastor of the church coming down, doing the whole politician thing, having a shirt, rolling it up, and looking like he's he's gonna go to work, having no tie on, and opening the doors himself as a, for a big media moment. Even if you do something like that, as deplorable as that sounds, and as tactless and tasteless as it does sound, if he did that. Um, people will be understanding, right? You have to make a moment out of everything, cool. And also it's a chance to kind of spread the gospel. But to not leave your doors open at all and to kind of let people stranded outside. And I think also a part of the social media team of Joel Osteen's church told people to seek refuge other places. No, it told them until other places have reached capacity, we won't open our church. Like, imagine that. Insane, isn't it? Anyway, in Kanye's infinite wisdom, he decides to go to that church to go and preach and to go and uh, give his testimony about how Jesus Christ has saved him. I think it's all BS, really, personally, for me. But it's just entertaining to watch it regardless. So let's watch Kanye West tell the church why exactly he became a Christian and how he decide, and how he plans to um, spread the word of Jesus Christ to the nation uh, with his massive platform. Let's see how that works out. I know that God's been calling me for a long time, and the devil's been distracting me for a long time. It's a bit of a people pleaser, isn't it, Kanye? Now, especially in this sort of sector, in this area, you don't, you didn't, you didn't see him pander as much when he was going around, you know, um, trying to be Trump's best friend. But when he's in the church circles, I think he's very aware. Any miss, because there isn't. In I think in Christ, the the good thing about this whole Christianity run that he's on is that for the most part, if he has a bit of a fumble or if he decides to kind of go full egomaniac on them. There is no coming back. There's no scene he can go to. There's no underground church scene. There's no church scene where he won't be met with, you know, um, hostility or questions or, you know, just kind of negative reactions. It's not going to happen. So I think he needs to be really careful about how he kind of maneuvers around, especially in the, uh, especially in the beginning stages, in his, in his infancy of his uh, walk with Christ. I think later on, he could obviously get away with murder, as you've seen with other preachers. But it's interesting to see how... How, he, how kind of willing he is to kind of pander to the crowd and play up to this idea that he's suddenly now become a Christian overnight. Um, you know, it's, I don't know whether you believe it or not, it's up to you, but you know, you, can, you know where I stand on this one. And when I was 
you know, in my lowest points, you know, God was there with me and sending me visions and inspiring me. And I remember sitting in the, the hospital at UCLA after having a mental breakdown and there's uh, documentations of me drawing a church and saying, writing, a, start a church in the, in the middle of Calabasas. And even after that, I went and made the, the Life of Pablo album. I said, this is a gospel album. And I didn't know how to totally make a gospel album and the Christians that were around. Supposedly, Life of Pablo is a gospel album. Have you heard Life of Pablo? Cool, I have. It's not a gospel album. It's not. I know artists, you know, not, you know, Artists like to say that their work is open for in interpretation, you know. Um, you can ascribe any meaning you want to it. I get it, cool. But some things sound like some things. That does not sound like gospel to me. That sounds like a hip-hop album. And maybe his last good album, decent album, you can actually listen to back to now, for the most part. It's a real, real crying shame what's happened to Kanye over the years. I'm, I'm okay with Kanye's output in clothing and design. And, you know, his activations of his albums are just out of this world. Take away the whole Christianity thing. The fact that he's going to these amazing buildings. The fact that he's doing all these activations, you know, in a prison, in a park, um, in the middle of a field. Like, it's insane how he's able to promote his albums. I don't know who's paying for all this stuff. I'm not sure if it's Def Jam. I'm not sure if they're taking budget from other artists. That's a question for another day. But in terms of marketing and promoting of his work, there's no one better. No one better in this industry than Kanye West. But actual artistry and music and musicianship and being able to make good stuff it's not really good maybe we're going to see the best of kanye when he links up with dr dre we've seen pictures of him obviously in the studio with dre so that might be somewhere we'd see him work well but so far it's been an absolute horror show what he's kind of gone through but the thing that's really curious to me is that i remember when the yandy thing was happening i remember virgil yeah but then you can't say you can't really take anything of virgil saying seriously because he's kanye's best friend right but I remember virgil saying He's heard Yandy from beginning to end. It's the best thing he's heard in a while, right? He really built it up. And then we never heard Yandy because obviously he scrapped it to make uh, Jesus King. But then when I've heard Yandy leaked, the leaked version of it with all the kind of um, reference tracks, it doesn't sound that amazing. Now, again, it's reference tracks, it's leaked stuff, stuff some stuff it hasn't been finished, hasn't been mastered. But I don't know if he's, maybe he's just lost it in the same, ve in the same vein as Jose Mourinho. You just, uh, there can come a point where you're a winner. And then time catches up with you. You stop evolving. You stop learning. You st or you just don't get good anymore. And then your level kind of kind of peters out a little bit. That might be part of the reason why he is where he is now. He's just a natural pivot to going to Christianity. I don't know. We're too, um, I would say, beaten into submission by society to not speak up and profess the gospel to, you know, to me because I was a superstar. So, but the, the only superstar is Jesus. Oh. See how much he's pandering. It's incredible to see Kanye pandering like this in his crowd. The so superstar is Jesus. Do you, do you really saying, think you'd say that you know, in I, Fox? I was going to make a gospel album. There were Christians that were there that were not. Excuse me, brother. If, I, I go into these streams of consciousness when I'm talking, and when, you, when you're speaking in the middle of it, it, it distracts me. I really appreciate the support, but I would like for everybody to be completely silent so I can let God flow through me as I speak to you guys today. This guy's a psychopath, man. He's a psycho. We knew it anyway before. I think it was, um, I think I can't be that annoyed by it because I think I liked it when he was doing this in terms of being the person that was going to break down the fashion's door fashion's um uh, gate well he's going to break down the yeah break down the doors for everyone in fashion um essentially that's what he did um, he was the trojan horse he f he got all the arrows and everyone else was able to come in and get nike collaborations and get deals and you know become creative directors and fashion directors and stuff cool he did it amazing and it worked then and it probably aligned more with the stuff that i'm into right um creative force artistry you know pushing yourself to mastery great but in this context in the church him telling everyone in the congregation to be completely silent in an evangelical church, right? This is the church where they're quote unquote happy clappy, right? Dancing, jubilation, speaking in tongues. He's requesting everyone to be completely silent so he can speak, so God can flow through him because God is now using him as he, what well, he ordained himself as the greatest artist of all time and now God is using him. Like, this guy's insane. He's insane, man. He's, ins he's an egomaniac on another level and. The worst thing is that this is this is gonna get worse. If there's one place where you can go and wax your ego, right, and give yourself an inflated sense of self, 
and think more of yourself is there's nowhere more to do this in the catholic church and obviously in the evangelical baptist church catholic churches of course they wear those crazy garments and they've got a massive crown on their heads and people have to kiss their ring all that sort of nonsense right and in, in baptist and evangelical churches they all the family and friends sit at the front row like vip seats right or in the back behind the stage or to the side of the stage they wear amazing suits the main preacher has security detail he drives you know a bulletproof car you know expensive watches flies private all the things that you would think that would um uh you know boost somebody's ego you can find them in the church especially if you're somebody of merit somebody of notoriety somebody with some kind of talent like have you have you met a choir director from a church before do you know how much big of an ego they have it's just, it's insane because they're the choir director right why wouldn't you have a big ego so imagine what he's going to be like in a few years when he suddenly gets his own church when he has people giving tithe when he has people uh falling at his knees when he kind of cast uh the devil out of people when he baptizes people imagine how big of an ego man is going to be you think he's horrible now imagine imagine start people start actually referring to him as a as a saint imagine it's going to be insane man like it's uncomfortable to see but no surprise similar to what we're seeing at spac nation we're going to see it in we're going to probably see it in the u.s as well um incredible we're probably exactly imagine it happening kanye west starts a church um he he tells kids to come into his church because he's able to give them cryptocurrency shares in yeezy or some stuff like that and then he gets with his kids to kind of give their life to church but they're only giving their life to god so they can they can get a uh, priority entry into a raffle to win a pair of alien f380s or something <laughs> oh again i laugh but this is definitely possible definitely possible but anyway what can you do man?